My dear friends, for our 23rd Sunday in the Ordinary Time, we heard of the amazing miracle of Jesus, uh, the miraculous healing of the man who was deaf and able to hear, and the um, healing of, and also with speech impediment. Now, this is this concerns about the senses, the powers uh, of man. So, this is an occasion for us to uh, um, know and review the official teaching of the church on human nature and the uh, powers of uh, the composition of human nature, what are our faculties and powers, uh, and um, we will go back to the um, uh, teaching of St. Thomas Aquinas uh, in his uh, great work on Summa Theologica, the official theology of, and philosophy of the Catholic uh, Church. And um, uh, hopefully this will uh, deepen our knowledge of who we are, what we are made of, and the uh, destiny of human nature. You know, how we were created and uh, uh, where are we destined to be. So it's a deeper knowledge of who we are. And uh, it is also essential in uh, our faith, in our relationship with God. Um, Pope Francis, uh, who is a Jesuit, uh, recommends the work of a priest, a fellow Jesuit, um, by the name of Anthony de Mello, um, who is a master on meditation and prayer based on the exercises of Saint uh, Ignatius of Loyola. And uh, he said that uh, when we pray, uh, it's not only the mind or the heart, but it's the whole person, which includes the senses. You know, so we will talk about this, uh, the whole person, what we are made of. Um, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, we are made of two major components, um, the body and the soul. The soul uh, came from God, uh, and the body is from the earth. That's what we are made of because we are earth people. Our material composition is earth. All the basic substances of the earth are found in our body, and as you know, you can see that in your blood work, right? You're made of carbon, uh, oxygen, uh, you know, and uh, these are this all uh, are uh, earth um, uh, materials. Now, the soul has two powers. The spiritual side from God, we have two basic motions of the soul. The soul uh, is basic, is we, first we have um, the mind, and the action of the mind is knowledge. You know, and knowledge, the object is truth. That's the uh, knowledge, the part of the mind. Now, what happens when we know? You know, what, what happens in knowledge? When, when knowledge means that we draw the object to us. When you say, I know that person, I have the image of that person, I know information about that person, so I, I draw the object to me. You know, I read the book, and the book is in my head, right? Or I know images, I know things, I perceive things, I draw it to me, okay? Now, when the object is lower than we are, we elevate it into a level of idea. We dematerialize it. You know, when you say, I know the tree, you don't put the tree in your head. You get the concept of the tree, the idea, the image. You elevate it. But when the object is higher than we are, we limit it because our minds are limited. Like God, we cannot know God completely, so our knowledge of God is limited. See? That's how knowledge functions. We draw the object to our mind. Love is opposite. Opposite motion. When you love, love is basically attraction. You are drawn to the object. You know, like when you like to eat fried chicken, you go to Kentucky. So, sorry, there are many other brands. But you go, 
but you go to the restaurant, you are drawn. You know, you, you are drawn when you like a person, you follow that person. You're drawn to the object. Now, the motion, when the object is lower than you are, you go down with it. Like when you love uh, something lower than you are, you go down with the object because you are drawn to it. But when the object is higher, you fly with it because you are drawn to it. That's why St. Paul said, love the things that are higher because then you become high, you go higher too because you are drawn to it. You know, like when you love God, you become like Him. See? But when you love something lower, you go down with it. So, these are the two motions of the soul. Knowledge and love. That's the spiritual side of us. Now, let's go to the body. The body has powers and faculties. First, the external senses. There are five of them. The external senses are our windows to the external world, our connection with the earth. We perceive reality and earth through these windows and openings in our bodies. First, sight. Very important window. Right? Sight. The uh, organ is the eyes. The object is uh, light and color. It's through our eyes that we know our surroundings. You know that we perceive reality and people and objects through the eyes. Um, of course, the other animals are stronger than we are. We know that our eyes become problem after 35 or 40, right? And we see a lot of floaters, you know, already, and the eyes is weakening. But the animals, like the eagle, the owl, has night vision. They're stronger than we are. Then we have the sense of smell. Okay, our organ is the nose and the nerves. The object are the different scents, you know, and odors. Again, there are many animals stronger than we are with the smell, like the dogs. You know, uh, when they find something, they use dogs to smell and to sniff because their nose, noses are always moist. Whereas us, when our nose is moist, we cannot smell. You know, we have colds. We are, we are impaired. But we have that uh, sense. Then the sense of hearing. Okay, we have that hearing that's the, talked about in the gospel. The um, organ is the ear and the internal uh, a composition of the ear and the object is sound okay sound it's uh, we thank God for this gift because we know that the earth is sounding because it is alive sustained by God there are two kinds of sounds the sound that is erratic and disturbing which we call noise depending on the demographic of the person you're talking to you know, because for children, their music is noise. And then, um, music, which is measured, melodious sound that is pleasant. So, that the ear is essential in survival. These were given to us by nature and by God for uh, survival. And so that we can connect with the reality around us. Then, we have the sense of, what else? Uh, Hearing, what else? A touch. Touch is the strongest in man. We have the strongest sense of touch because it's, uh, it's um, situated in the uh, skin and all the uh, elements and the data that we receive through uh, touch are all communicated to the brain. So it is direct uh, experience of the object and uh, object is texture and all kinds of surfaces and temperature, and these are all uh, power. So, we take care of these senses because they are our connection with external reality. Um, if these senses are affected, we are one window closed from reality. It's difficult to communicate, 
uh, with the world, with the senses that are um, affected. So we take care of the external senses that are located outside the body. Now, there is another set of senses that are located in the brain. According to St. Thomas, there are four major internal senses in the brain. They are very important not only for mental health, but also for survival and quality of life that we have to need. And uh, as you notice later on, um, uh, very essential to our uh, well-being and survival. There are four of them, uh, very important. The first one in the brain, at the very center of the brain, is what you call common sense. Okay, have you heard of people saying, use your common sense? Do you know what is it? You know what common sense is? And where is it located? How does common sense function? So, common sense is everything that we perceive from the external senses, taste, smell, hear, all the data that we receive are all sent to the central control system in the brain. Then the brain processes this and they organize this all this uh, sense data that we receive and then common sense in the brain will immediately tell you two things first where you are and second the time when it tells you time and place immediately from the data received from the external senses, common sense tells you, you are here now in the church, you know, at attending a mass, listening to a homily, at around, uh, what time is it? 12.25. And there, why is it necessary that we know this? So that we will behave accordingly. Okay, so that we will behave our behavior is based on time and place. You are now in the church, in the Mass, listening to the homily, and therefore you should be listening and not sleeping. Right? You should not be thinking of your grocery list. You should be concentrating on the Gospel. Behave properly. Because if you stand up and scream and dance here in front, we will call the police. Why? Because you're incoherent. You know, and that's the definition of a nut. <laughs> you know, a person who behaves not according to time and place, he's incoherent with the reality. Your actions should conform to space and time so that you will behave properly according to where you are and when. It is. That's common sense. Be objective and realistic. That's the meaning of common sense. Be, live according to the real. Don't invent a world that is not real. And this is a temptation every time. Sometimes reality is hard. So what do we do? We uh, dominate the brain and modify it and create a fantasy that is not real, or we inject something, we take something to make the brain confused and numb because reality is hard, no common sense, and very destructive when we escape reality. We are told, don't escape, face reality. Because you, if you escape, no common sense, and you'll be miserable because your actions are incoherent with the real. That is why common sense is necessary for mental health. This is a good advice for people who worry so much because we put so many things in the... Nothing has happened yet. Reality is beautiful. Enjoy the now. You're already thinking of the past, the future. That's not real. Now. 
be objective. That is the importance of common sense, you know, living according to the real. Then another tremendous power in the brain, you know, that is the um, basis for all the wonderful, beautiful things in the world, that is the foundation of all our achievements and culture, the brain. You cannot underestimate the tremendous power of the brain. What you call the sense of imagination. This is not fantasy. This is not illusion. Imagination. We have the power in the brain to perceive objects and things and events, images that we store in the brain. Images. Then, when we are alone, we can revisit these images. We can mix them. We can modify them. We can combine them and invent something new. These are powers. If you know how to harness the limitless power of the imagination, you will be very wealthy. Because you can mix images. This is the foundation of music, um, arts, even architecture, cinema, uh, even um, everything that we have invented. Books are all products of the imagination. You mix one image with another. For example, you have man and bird. You put it together, Superman. Right? Or bat and man, Batman. You know, so imagine what the culture can do, entertainment, everything. They're all basis of uh, imagination. Even our um, technology, you know, I inventions, innovations and technology, research are all harnessing the ability of the mind to combine images, create new ones. So every time we have this people who have very creative imagination, they sit down and create new things and then they produce them that's the reason for inventions and in research technology medicine these are all products of the power of the mind of the imagination that is why people tell you use your imagination life is exciting new ways of creating things new ways of doing things harness the power of the brain sense of imagination now the uh, third, we have the estimative sense or calculative sense. This is good for sportsmen, if you are driving, if you are uh, projecting for the future, investors and planners. The mind has the power to project, estimate, calculate. We have that power uh, in the brain. Mathematics, for example, is based on calculation. Then, um, very important, and very relevant to our demographics, memory, sense of memory. We have that power in the brain. What is memory? Memory is the ability to associate one experience with another so that we can establish continuity of experience, that there is a continuity of experience what will happen if, if memory is injured, if we lose connection and continuity, and we cannot recognize we are lost? And you can imagine the feeling of a person who is lost. There are people who have lapses of memory where they could not recognize, they cannot remember where they live or their spouses. You lose the connection, you know? And it is very hard if we lose this. So we are told to take care of this sense. And I know it's a challenge at a certain point in life. And um, we pray, you know, have you ever experienced being in a room in your house and wonder why are you there in the first place? You don't remember why I'm here in the garage. And then you try to get back to where you came from. Oh, I need uh, uh, something. Memory. You, the feeling of being lost is very difficult. So, what's the lesson about all the senses and all this? Our destiny. First, 
We thank God when we are younger, the senses are strong. But we know that as we go through life, they weaken because they are powers of the body. And the body, we have to admit. Now, be patient with your senses. You know, they fade like sight. And I can see it already. I already see floaters. You know, a lot of floaters. And sometimes, Lord, why is it that my eyes are blurry? And the Lord said, well, thank God you cannot just see your wrinkles. You know, <laughs> because you be patient with the senses. They are fading. You know, and be compassionate to people whose senses are hampered. Like when people lose memory, spouses and family, be understanding, be my classmate have lapses in memory already, and the people understand when he says, Mass, he forgets, you know, but the people know, understand, be compassionate to people that are have problems with their senses because they are slowly uh, fading. And, um, you know, um, we know that when we are about to leave this world and prepare for heaven, all these senses will close one by one because we are leaving the world. We don't need them anymore. The last one to close is hearing. You know, you can see that in the hospitals. People can no longer feel and see, but they can hear. Until we go to another place where we don't need the senses anymore. We will have, the soul will continue to live. But we will have a new vision, not with the eyes anymore. Remember what St. Paul said? Faith, hope, and love. Faith and hope will be absorbed by love. We will, and love is the only thing that will remain. That love is our new vision of God, a vision that is, cannot be compared to any at all. It's not to the eyes anymore. But it is a union with our Maker that cannot be explained because nobody can has experienced that here on earth. The direct vision of God, when we are united with God through love, everything will close. Love remains. So while we are still here on earth, senses are strong, cultivate love. So that when you go to God, you know how to deal with Him and He can recognize you. All of these powers were given to us by God to prepare us for that vision that is beyond wild imagining, much beautiful, but more colorful than the vision that we have here on earth. So we are grateful to God for giving us all these senses, and we use them properly for His glory and honor.